many people that work in a job, they feel undervalued, underappreciated. They feel as though I have to keep this job because I back myself into a corner. It pays the bills. I need it, but I hate it. I hate being here. It does not fulfill my spirit. Is it too late? Is it ever too late to make a change, to change the course of your life? Because if you're 20, maybe 30 years old, you don't have but so many responsibilities to you. Maybe you don't have that mortgage. Maybe you don't have five kids. But a 40-year-old, 50-year-old, has been doing the same thing 20, 30 years now. And they feel as though the company is getting younger. I'm getting squeezed out. I'm trying to hold on for dear life. Is it too late for any of us to make a course correction, make a change in our life? Every breath is an opportunity for change. So if we take just that statement, Sean, mm -hmm. I think every human being can realize that in any moment, your life changes. So, you know, before we started this dialogue, you may have read about me, yep. but now you will have a whole different perception of who I am, where I'm coming from. Correct. And both our lives would have been enriched because I've seen your name, but I did not put a face and a voice and a human being in front of me like we are now. So change is consistently around us. The problem is we perceive it that it's not there. And therefore, when we need to change something, we find it difficult to change. How important, and, and I'll start with you. Do you still to this day have mentors? Do you still yes. seek counseling outside of yourself considering you're the best life coach on the planet? I believe every human being needs to have a mentor. Because my calling is to bring this work and my method in education, in healthcare, in business, in leadership, and changing government and politics, and bring the method across the board to one billion people, I also need a mentor that are already there. Because, you know, I've reached all of those things about creating the millions and creating all of those things. But my vision is, in order to deliver this vision, I need to have both uh, spiritual intelligence and material uh, wealth, bring it together to make a greater impact in the world. When people ask me about, you know, how do you do it? For 30 years, Sean, I've never stopped investing in myself. Not for 30 years. Practically from, uh, from the age of five when I started school. Because even back then, my father hired a private math and science tutor to work with me. So when I started um, high school, I already had uh, the knowledge of um, the physics and maths for four years in advance. So when I started university in Croatia before the war, I already passed the entry exams and I was uh, <laughs> top three from 1,300 students. Oh, wow. And when I came to England, I already knew the science and engineering that was being taught at UCL. So I think... Uh, learning and growing and always having mentors around, I promote that globally. Why? Because we cannot be our own mirror. You know, that's why we even have a mirror. If we didn't have mirror, we wouldn't even know how do we look. <laughs> <You know? laughs> because somebody might say to you, this is how you look. But unless you see yourself, you don't know. And I always believe, uh, you know, if you look at the car, the way we design the cars, when we look at the mirrors, imagine if you remove all the side mirrors, it won't be safe to drive. Similarly, it won't be safe for you to go on a path, especially if you have a bigger vision in life or you want to create a new job or new business or you have problems in your relationship or you have mental problems, you have stress, you have emotional problems, uh, uh, whatever it might be that we all go through challenges. I always recommend people, go to the best. Even if you'd have to invest everything you have, do it. Uh, the way I did it for the 10 years, you know, I, ha I held three jobs to be able to hire different healers, pay for my education, and have mentorship and coaches before I even thought I'm going to become one. Because back then, my vision was to be one of the top uh, technology officers and run a big company. And, you know, that was my vision back then. 
But the reality is, my mother knew I'm going to write books uh, 20 years before I started writing my first book. And, you know, then I met all those teachers and all those amazing people who said to me, oh, your vision is too small at the moment. Uh, by the time you go 40, your entire life will change. And I used to laugh at them. And, you know, part of me wanted to believe it. And part of me saying, who are you to tell me about my future? But the reality is every 10 years, my entire life has shifted. You know, I spent 20 years in technology and education, running billion pound technology programs, managing people, uh, developing people, and almost keeping up to date with all the licensing and all the, I would say, qualifications that Microsoft uh, and uh, um, all the different uh, back-end systems acquired for me to have, and all the uh, government, I would say, regulations. So I had to be up to date with all the knowledge to be able to keep up at that level of seniority. But during all of that time, I went into a lot of seminars, a lot of uh, workshops when it comes to mindset, when it comes to healing, because I studied a lot of the healers, because as a child, I had a lot of health challenges. And I almost lost my life in hospital at the age of nine. And it was a healer back in Macedonia that my mom used to take me that uh, in a way uh, helped me heal fully from an illness that the doctors told my parents that I'm going to die. So for me, this uh, curiosity about understanding the unseen, understanding the, I would say, the alternative way of approaching well-being and then bringing science to that was with me all of my life. It just went to a whole new level, new awareness every time I would overcome a certain challenge in my life. I love that you said, you know, because I asked you about mentors and you said you tell people, go to the best and spend whatever it takes because really it's an investment in yourself. In you. It is your greatest you. asset, it's you, no one else. <laughs> not your family, not your child. You know, that's why when you go on a plane, First, you put the mask to an adult, not to a child. You know, that's why they make it illegal for you to do that. Because in case of a crash, you'll die. You know, in case of a crash with you as an adult, you have a time to save your child. Similarly, the more you as a parent become stronger in mindset, emotionally, financially, in business, in relationship, you empower all of those areas of life, the more your child will be empowered. With that thought, you know, a question just occurred to me. What would you say is the number one killer of finances? You see people who can't just get it right in relationship. And again, you know, they, they, they get with great people, but they find a way to sabotage their own relationship. They may work at a great job, but they find a way to sabotage the relationships in terms of moving up the corporate ladder. Is there a mindset that holds these people back? What is the number one killer, in your opinion? Of well, <laughs> you actually answered the question. Really? It is indeed, it is the mind. Why? Because the mind is the engine that creates your reality. You know, a lot of people chase wealth in the future. Wealth is not in the future. Wealth is present in the moment. Stop and there. Stop there. To... Stop, stop. Whoa, whoa. I like where you're going. I want you to elaborate on that. Wealth is not in the future. Wealth, because there's somebody right now who's broke as hell. There's somebody right now who is sitting in a one bedroom apartment somewhere and they can barely pay the rent. What do you mean wealth is in the present? Okay, so if you look at science, because I studied quantum physics, I studied law of attraction, I studied everything, a lot of the things that basically are out there and they've been there for ages, but human mind cannot comprehend it in a way that helps them serve, helps them transform their lives. That's why I wanted to combine the Eastern and Western methodologies into one so people can use that. Meaning, uh, neither past, uh, both past and future is created in the present. Okay, I got to wrap my mind around that. Neither... Past. Both, uh, both past and the future is created in the moment. Elaborate. Without the moment, without the present moment, you don't have past, you don't have a future. 
Okay, I think I'm following you. But this okay. is this is it's, very it's subliminal to me. It's a deep concept, but yes, it's it is. a very scientific concept. It's very it cerebral. Every... I'm, I'm right now trying to, to, to really grasp this concept. Everything that is, is in the present moment. That also includes wealth. The problem is, if the brain perceives it that it's not, it keeps chasing it in the future. Therefore, you're not present in the moment. Oh, wow. Gotcha. So you could have the greatest opportunity presented to you in front of you because you are chasing it in the future. You're missing it. I love this. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.